Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We begin at 11 with an air quality alert for southeast lower Michigan. Our air quality now considered very unhealthy for everyone. A look at our sky cams across Metro Detroit with time lapse video from throughout the day and into the night. Haze being seen for miles in Mount Clemens, Ann Arbor and downtown Detroit. We're glad you're with us tonight for Local 4 News at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. The forewarned weather team has been tracking the air quality throughout the night. So let's get over to Kim Adams for a look at how bad the air is tonight, Kim. Well, as of 10 o'clock tonight, the air quality in Metro Detroit was the second worst in the world. So that tells you exactly how bad it is. 240 is our current AQI. That's the air quality index. It starts at zero and goes all the way to 250 and above and we're at 240. So what is that like? Well, we compare it to cigarette smoking at 150. Now again, we're at 240. 150 is like smoking seven cigarettes and we're well above that at 240. So definitely an issue with the air quality. You can see the scale there goes from good at zero all the way to hazardous, which is over 250. And we're right there tonight, close to hazardous. So look at this air quality index. We're not alone. It's across much of the Midwest. It will be moving to the east. So into Thursday and Friday, we'll start to see those images come out of New York and Boston once again, where they have the air quality problems. But for us, air quality is an issue tonight. You can see the skyline of Detroit. This is smoke, and a lot of people have reported that they smell the smoke. It smells like burning plastic. And again, it's not fog, it's not, it's not clouds. That is actual smoke coming down from Canada. Temperatures right now are in the 60s. So we're going to talk about when the smoke is going to clear out. And also we have a marginal risk for severe weather on Thursday that we'll talk about that as well. Okay, Kim. It is an almost unimaginable case of child abuse out of mid-Michigan tonight. The body cam video captures police saving a two-year-old little girl being drowned in a bathtub by her own mother. This is really hard to watch. Uh, police say three children narrowly escaped being killed after their older sister called 911. Mara McDonald live downtown. Uh, uh, we, we can't point it out enough. This body camera video is brutal, Mara. It's so hard to watch, Devin, so everyone needs to be aware because not only on this do you see that little girl being held down in the bathtub, there were two other children in this house. Both of them had stab wounds and had been forced to drink cleaning chemicals. Buddha. Albion police along with Calhoun County kicked in the door to find that 35 year old mother holding her two year old underwater in the tub. They immediately pulled the child out of the bathtub and began doing CPR on the child uh, and were able to revive her rather quickly. The next discovery just as awful. A two and four year old forced to drink cleaning chemicals and suffering from stab wounds. Just above the chest. We're here with you, honey. Into part. We're here with you, honey. I know. Police got all the children out of the house into the hospital where they're recovering. Their mother is in custody. The little one's 15 year old sister called 911 in what the chief says was a chaotic call. I know it was pretty frantic and there was crying in the background. They were saying right. uh, and screaming. Um, and she was saying, I think that, she, that her mom was trying to kill her or her sisters. Albion police say they'd been to the house before, not for child abuse, but for domestic assault, where that 35 year old mom was the victim. She's now facing charges for the attempted murder of three of her children. Back here live and she's behind bars tonight on a $500,000 bond. She's facing multiple felonies that would land her in jail or prison for the rest of her life, life if she is convicted. As far as what predicated all this, police and prosecutors have not revealed that yet. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. So extraordinary. All right, Mara. Uh, we've just got this in tonight. The prisoner seen on video being punched by Warren police has now filed a $50 million lawsuit. According to court documents, 19 year old Jaquan Smith claims his constitutional rights were violated. The security camera video that we've showed you shows Matthew Rodriguez punching Smith in the fingerprinting room before throwing him into a cell. Yesterday, the department fired Rodriguez and he faces assault and battery charges too. 
Tonight, a family of seven is asking for help while living in a place that's less than ideal. Believe it or not, this is their home, and as you can see, it's definitely seen better days after a fire ripped through it. Victor Williams shows us how organizations are trying to lend a helping hand and how you can as well. Yeah, the damage left behind by this fire is quite clear, but the family inside of this house is still somehow able to make it a home. It's been real rough. It's been a, it's been a hard struggle. You know, we've been making the best out of what we can do. To say it's been a struggle would be an understatement for Khalil Bankston, his wife and their five kids ever since their Tracy Street home caught fire back in February. When I played back the footage on my uh, camera from the surveillance, it started underneath our bed. All you seen was just flashes, you know. After relocating with loved ones for a short time, the family had to do the unthinkable and move back into the charged structure. We ended up having to come back here. Now we're just trying to make it work. That includes laying wood down in certain places and making the most of all they have. This is where me, the wife, and the, the smallest, we've been here on the blow up bed. And um, uh, the front room, got another two blow up beds. And with both being unemployed on top of not having homeowner's insurance. Me and the wife have been doing everything on our own, everything. It's getting a lot more difficult to take care of the children. It's hard, you know, hearing them wish that they had their home back and their rooms and toys and clothes and shoes, all the things that they had normally, you know, you know, it, it takes a toll on you after a minute, you know, you try to be strong for them, but it's hard. At least one organization, Grandmother's Touch is stepping up to help. And they're doing what they got to do and keep, to keep their family together. But at the same token, they need some help. Wendy Smith says they're assisting with clothes, furniture and food. They humble. They humble. But still, in the end, it's the sense of normalcy that's missing the most. I would just love for it to be in a home again. Just, you know, home living where the kids can run free again. We ain't got to worry about uh, being rained on. And back here live, we're told that this family is hoping to have all of this potentially straightened out before the winter comes. As you guys know, that will be here before you know it. So if you guys would like to help them out with all of this, you can head over to our website, click on Detroit.com. There we have a direct link to their GoFundMe page. Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor, thank you. A community on edge as Ypsilanti police investigated shooting that left two young men dead. Happened last night in a parking lot in the 800 block of George Place, and today we learned a 16-year-old boy and a 20-year-old man died. Two other teens are expected to recover from their injuries. Investigators say the victims were inside the same car when someone fired at them. Their car then crashed as they tried to drive away. If you know anything, saw anything that might help in the investigation, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. An update to a story we brought you last Friday at 11. Two men are charged in connection to a shooting in Livonia. Cell phone video shows the moments. Gunfire was exchanged on Rensselaer Street. Police say there was some kind of argument going on when a 16-year-old kicked the front glass door of a home. They say 35-year-old Terrell Morris came out, started shooting. The teen was hit in the leg. Three other people were not hit. Morris faces several charges, including assault, 45 year old Lamont Sherman is charged with lying to police and tampering with evidence. Prosecutors using new evidence to fight the latest appeal from the parents of the Oxford High School shooter. In a court filing obtained by Local 4, prosecutors say James and Jennifer Crumbly were grossly negligent. It states that Jennifer Crumbly admitted she paid little attention to the disturbing drawings that school officials brought to her attention before the shooting occurred. Prosecutors also say a receipt found on the Crumblies when they were arrested after you recall they were on the run. That receipt was for the gun used at the school. The state Supreme Court is currently considering an appeal from the Crumblies to have the case tossed. Friends and family of Minister Malik Shabazz asking for prayers after the community activists suffered a heart attack. More than 100 people gathered this afternoon for a prayer vigil in front of Henry Ford Hospital near Detroit's new center area. Shabazz has worked to bring awareness to countless crimes in Detroit. Organizers say the turnout is a testament to Shabazz's impact on the city. I mean, it just shows how much he was respected and his work speaks for itself. These people aren't out here in less than a 24 hour notice for a guy that wasn't doing anything in the community. 
On Monday, the same day he suffered the heart attack, Shabazz was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. He is in critical condition. We'll keep you posted as we get updates on his health. Alcohol sales at certain on-campus sporting events one step closer to happening. Michigan House voted 85 to 23 to approve the bill. Legislation would lift a current state ban and allow universities to apply for liquor licenses to sell alcohol at university athletic stadiums. Supporters of the bill say 11 of the 14 schools in the Big Ten do allow sales at football games. So the bill now heads to Governor Whitmer's desk.